better access to internet at recreational spaces has become something that's also been bigger. Um, especially with students, you know, the STEM programs, different extracurricular extracurricular initiatives. If you have a campus that maybe does not get reliable access to internet or internet is only really available within the four walls of the school because maybe there are limitations as it relates to cell service and carriers, how can you provide access to reliable internet at your recreational spaces? Um, we spoke to one school recently, they have a robotics team and their robotics team has trouble being able to go out, let's say to uh, the school football field or the baseball field if they wanna do some of their testing, research and experiments they're not able to you know, connect or have any type of reliable connection in those spaces. So if you're trying to record that data, uh, record video of what you're doing and be able to you know, go back and hold on to that stuff, it's a bit more challenging. That also impacts that school environment, the teaching and learning experience that educational institutions are able to provide to their students. But as much as we want to, oh, I cut you off, Janie, what was that? I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but- like No, go ahead, man the stadiums, the football stadiums and all, if they're not, uh, they are con they are still considered a classroom. And mm -hmm. let's say they're not on the campus with the school. They can be an annex and they can r still receive uh, by putting them in as an annex to, I'm just gonna use Walton County for an example. Walton mm -hmm. County, um, they have, a have a school called the magnet school and it is a stem school and it it comes the students are registered like at the south walton high school well the annex we we put them as an annex under south walton high school so uh therefore e-rate would pay for their internet access because they were an annex and they had classrooms. A football stadium is also considered an annex because that's a classroom. Once you take students to a facility that is owned by the district, that becomes mm. an annex to whatever school those students attend. Am I making sense? Yes, ma'am. That makes perfect sense. So and as so long as any learning can happen there, you can, you can utilize E-rate funding in those spaces. That's correct. And they can be okay. listed as an annex. And uh, then they fall under the same bin number at the school that um, their most of their students attend. Okay. So I think that's really helpful to know. Um, we've seen more grant resources become available specifically for the recreational spaces, uh, K-12 stadiums, arenas, and athletic venues. Um, there's been a major push there. So it's good to know that you can also utilize E-Rate to also fill in some of those gaps that may come in. You can combine those resources, the grant side and the E-Rate side to fully fund a project, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm.